And uh, for me, actually, Mambo Akuchora is started in school. There was a time, there was a time uh, we had no place to stay. Um, oh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I remember we could not allow Chinia train. Chinia, the same like uh, what I really did right is uh, always have a meeting with myself and, uh, and accepting like where I've really failed and trying to fix it. You've, uh, what's it called, served some of the biggest celebrities that you have in East Africa, from Diamond to yes, Calibra yes, to yes. whoever. How did you come across them? I think I'm lucky because the reality, most of these celebrities, people text them, try like to mm. tell them I'm not. Yes. I'll be real, man. Like for example, shout out to my G, like Kali. Yeah. Bro, I got it was on a Sunday, man. I just got a text. Good evening and welcome to the Late Night Business. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight we have quite an exciting show lined up with a gentleman who's literally, I've seen, you know, sometimes you've told stories that, oh, Nilianza from nothing to something, but I've seen from nothing to something that he is, like, uh, that he is right now. His name is Elia Min Ali. But before we get to him, I would like just to introduce where we are. We are at the Capital Club. As you can see, it's such a beautiful space that you can actually get access to meeting rooms. If you want to go to the gym, you can actually get access to the gym. And those are some of the benefits you can actually get to access as a member of the Capital Club located here in Westlands. Today, I have with me a guest I have seen literally rise from nothing with all that he had was just an ambition. He's a gentleman I've also even featured on my book called The Business Conquest on a, on a chapter called Talent Pays because a gentleman who's literally transformed art into a big business. I'm speaking to none other than Elia Min Ali, a brother, and I've seen you s from nothing to something. <laughs> and thank you so much for having come to this show. And thank you for having me here, bro. As we start you. this particular conversation, I'd like just starting off uh, the con my conversation with asking you, what's the something that you're literally most grateful for today? I actually, uh, first thing first, life. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful too, also to, you know, being here. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I'm grateful for, for everything that is happening, uh, for the ups and downs, and also, we give thanks every day. Interesting. And yes. This, the, uh, we connected, I think, over 10 years back. Actually, more, man. <laughs> it's over 10 years back. And before even, let me just set the stone, stone to it. A few, uh, I think in 2012, 2011, yes. I was in yeah. the business of doing Shambhalas. Yes. And I needed to I sell t-shirts. And, and I got and your number and I bro, called you. Bro, actually, at some point, me and Corona, that would be a while back for the MBA. Yes. Let's go. I called him as a stranger. I didn't know him first, but I got your number and I wanted some t-shirts to sell. Yes. And I didn't have the money to buy it. I got a connection to you. I introduced myself to you. Yes. And you, gave, you trusted me as a stranger. And ended up paying you, but it's such an interesting journey. Yeah, but let me just so. create a context to our audience. Yes, you're a tattoo artist, you're an artist, and uh, it's a, something that you're doing on a bigger scale right now. But yes. before we get into where you are right now, just take me through your story. Ulizali Wapi, um, why did your interest in art start come about? Okay, actually, I was, uh, I was born in Mombasa, um, um, in a place called Meganini. And um, my education level, I'm from Anilienda from class one to class eight. Mm -hmm. That was to eight on Mimariza. Mm -hmm. So the, I, I didn't go to high school mm -hmm. yeah, because of uh, here and there, but I'm grateful at least to Azazi Walijaribu, they tried where they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, actually, Mambo Yakuchora is started in school. Mm -hmm. So you remember, Kondovaga, like a white t shirt and some shorts, yeah. a blue one. So for me, Likuwa the moment uh, people was, will tell me, Kufunga Shule. So me was doing like graffitis on t-shirt. Nini na kumuka mara kada. Nishapele kwa chani. Inaitua chani primary. Chani, uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. So, na, I remember nishaitua paredini. I said, mara nasikia da. Mm. Nini ya mini mara nishaitua. Nishapele mindo na ribu. Watu shule sababu mashati na chora na chora. Nini. So, niko napatua kama 50 mbubu. Nishana nini, niko kama vile Pablo Escobar na laba rafu, sambusa. So, yani, niko na da. If, 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 if I can do such kind of thing and it's in school, so it means if you take it more serious. See, the, every day you walk, let's be realistic, uh, the, the most selling thing personally is like advertisement. Kama mm -hmm. t-shirts, the for you. So you're like, what if one and see able to come you? So that is where the interest became more and more. And I'm grateful because you have persistence. Yeah, and so I started, that's how I had more interest on art, yes. Interesting. Just take me through your background. You met to a letter of Olivka to class 8. But just take me through your background. How is it growing up? Did you grow up in a, in a poor family? How uh, exactly were some of the challenges uh, you faced growing up? Actually, before I even say where you may, like I've been brought up and everything, I was the first person in, in my family to buy a sofa set. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom came and sat on my, on, on my seat like this. She yeah. was like, hey, no, 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 is this your house? 
So that's where I'm coming from. You wow. get my point? You're the first person in your family. I'm the first person so even to drive a car in my, in my family. Yeah. So even growing up, you were a super set? No, man, nothing, bro. Just paint for me a it picture. Was, you know, sometimes you always so see like... So check this out. Uh -huh. This is, uh, th there's a place in, in, in coast, um, still in, in Migadini, right? It's called Potrees. The reason why it's called Potrees, if you Google, we say flani kuna kuna Italia for like crazy people and everything. Mm -hmm. So we used to go. We used to live near the ocean. So we used to go fetch water. Nyumbani ni nivo. I didn't call kula di, but iki mungu mungu. But but ile kujua na atu ni ni. Cause uh, there was a time. There was a time uh, we had no place to stay. Um, oh. Yes yes yes. Uh, I remember to go to train. Oh, as a whole family. How many? Yes yes. Uh, that time we were six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was it? And my mom, my my my, my dad, Al Kwasha Farik. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I remember uh, we used to say there's a place in in Mombasa called Train Zile Mbovu Mbovu. I remember my mom would come on bagger, my skin in the town, you'd come I don't, you get my point. Mm -hmm. So then she got help from my uncle. No, come say, yeah, come pelika kwake. So us being there, I'm grateful, yeah, we had the moment and the time. Yeah, of course it wasn't easy, yeah, but uh, we are grateful at least we, we got a place to chill and everything. Yeah, then from there we were moved out to Kafuzo to Kandasana. Also, oh, as a family, so mom used to go try to borrow during the day. Yes, yes. Luckily, in the evening you guys have gone to school and you come sleep quite the, the, There's nothing like school because uh, at a uniform, I'm not. I used to go to school. I used to go to school. I used to go to school. I used to go to I remember, you remember this butter or whatever, yes, they had like yes. a flower. Yes. Man, I had that, right? Every As day, I, I know, when people are going for break, me, I don't want to go. Oh, because I'm like, wow! Oh! <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful for everything. So that's exactly what happened. From my first uncle, we were kicked out. We moved to the brother. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there for a few years and everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't easy, of course. So that's exactly where we're coming from. Interesting. But I'm so, grateful, yes. So amongst the six siblings, which number do you fall? Uh, I'm actually the last one. You're though. the last one. I'm the last one, but I'm the first one. If In you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm, the, sure. I'm the small big brother. <laughs> so, yes. so you grew up in that particular difficulty. How, how exactly was it for you as a child? Okay. So primarily single mother because your dad died very, very early. Mom is struggling. You don't have in a home to stay. Yes. What is going on through your mind? What are some of the memories that that particular part of your life was like? Okay, f funny thing, you know, uh, that, that's a really good question because that time you don't really think about that situation. Mm. Yeah, because, because you're like, like, you know, any umajipata, so you just, it's like going with the flow. Mm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I, I was, nakumbuka like six, seven years, mm. So the more you sell, the more of a commission. I said, you want an to get Kong Sana, the Akilia Yashara in Giamon. I can book a Kamo Yoza in a bidi banana. I remember those time, didn't come. Then you can ask your cousin, mean Lena Dun can talk a shaky young flan, to Kayala and Volkanesha. So that point of because But the, the the beautiful thing I can say is uh, in the evening when mom used to come home, maybe like I kikap with it. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you see, that time you don't really think about the struggle because you just enjoy the moment because those love, you know. Yeah, so right now, the more you grow, that's when you understand, like, we really tried our level best where we can. Oh, wow. So, yes. uh, even I didn't know that part of you. So, probably yeah. <laughs> you grew up in that difficulty um, yes. until you, you got to class 8. So, you couldn't go further to high school. Yeah. Um, how did you feel at that particular point? Because, my mama looked at me and to go to high school. So, what did you feel at so, that uh, so, point? So, what happened, actually, mm -hmm. uh, funny thing, I got, I, I remember I got 194. Mm -hmm. That's an E, right? Mm. That's, oh, yeah, the, the E is for Elia, yeah. I mean ink, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in your mushroom. Uh, in your Elia means, that's the one in So exactly. Yeah. So I uh, remember I came home, uh, I failed, I had, I had an identified told mom, this is what I got. You know, she told me, Kashi Jiko Bara to pick it, because... She did tell me that. I never catch any cobana than the old to pick it. So you see, so, so you see, like, you're like, actually, hey, come in, I'm going to go to the house. Mama, 
I just go, ah. I was really worried, you know. I'm worried. I'm, I'm walking all the way from school. I'm like, Oh, you, my Jirani, I want to my results is me talking. My mango, I need results. Come as me talking. Nenda, and I'm okay. I'm not tired. That's all. I think, I think, I think I was, I think I was one of these kids. Kwa, kwa family, I'm mzazi and I do a tour. Ah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh you, oh So, yeah, man. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, ah, no, she, ah. Inakuaje? Yeah. Kasha jiko, okay? Mm. Mimi nilichoma ile yeah. 194. Kasha tukala vizuri yani story ilisha hivyo. Unielewa? Yeah. So yeah, then from there on kuna ah inabidi hapa akili naika kwa maisha. Mm. Eh, hey, maana yake because oh, of, uh, I think I think I think And only because of the difficulty that you went through. Yeah, yeah. apart actually from the difficulties. My my brothers are really smart though. Mm. Yeah, I, I had a bra- my sister got a B plus. Mm. My brother had an A. Mm. He's really good. Mm-hmm. As I think mamango alikuwa so shatosheka na A na zile B zilikuwa kwa ziko. So last one to about because probably we lacked an E. Yes. So she was like at least now we have it, you know. So for the A B C I mean E. Alafu kuna wenye vio nikataka kusoma so at least alikuwa sha balance. Eh. Yeah. Hey. I'm grateful bro. Yeah. So so ukamwambia ukawashe jiko maisha endele so class 8 yeah. ndio umeacha class 8. So what yeah. happened after that? Ah uh, so actually uh, after class 8 uh, my my brother uh I used to, I I really used to dream of of Nairobi. I know, first thing first it wasn't even about money or anything. Mm. Just buildings. Because yeah. you know I can cause like ni ndogo nini. Just buildings and the way people are saying oh see any fast life things like that. So my brother was in Nairobi. There's a center in in Karen. Mm. Uh, it's called uh, there's a center in Karen. Nimesao jina kidogo. So he used to live there at the center. Uh, so, uh, I remember alikuwa anafanya mambo ya engineering lakini alikuwa alikuwa amepatiwa sponsorship though he was smart so akalipia oh. like he had people who paid for his school and everything funny thing with that e mm. see now my my brother introduced me to Nairobi yeah. for the first time I came to Nairobi after from after exactly after exactly mm. so I was supposed to go now to high school because he was willing to talk to the sponsors yeah miss kudangani mm. si sponsor alikuwa anajaribu kulipa si ndo form 1 ndo nini sponsor alicha kulipa maana kwa hiyo ile ile irudi tena. Oh so for one field but easy liko. Ah atasi kwa na dha form 1. Hata yeah. ile term tu ile ya kwanza yani. So I think it's because of ile kwanza biashara mapema kufikiria. Mm-hmm. Then also I think uh so the moment I reach in Nairobi after 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 all that. Mm-hmm. So my mom used to call and be like hey, how's school how's everything so my bro- my brother was like he was really hardening me up like uh we're not supposed to tell mom you're not in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah so we started hustling. So sometimes mom calls and be like hey shule vipi? namdanganya ni sengine ndio zenda hata mahali pengine out eh unapiga hata picha pengine ile na nielewa na unamtumia lakini sieti ni yako ile pengine iko mmeitwa conference but nzuri mpatana na kuko nini picha mother yojo unaishi unaishi good life exactly so uh we started business i remember with my brother we used to go to ECD we used to buy like perfumes and everything uh, yeah yeah so Exact exact no that time those not the Simon oh, so the, the Somali ones oh, that time yeah, that was exactly and, exactly <laughs> exactly uh, and uh, so this is this is how this is how we do it actually we did it uh, we had a card uh, your card like like if i meet you i'm sending you for example like this book right I'm, i'll be like uh, my name's are uh, i mean ali i'm actually fundraising i'm not telling you that i'm selling it i've not shown you my product though mm. I don't know if you have I'm like I'm actually fundraising this so we can be able to help like maybe like kids in Kuwait mm-hmm. and everything it was part of survival. Shall you shake a kizungu kidogo kwa nini ushafurai na tu product na uza lakini jioni ilikuwa kwa nia ya shiba ya tumbo. So you just go that's that's how we survive. In the meantime I was still drawing and everything. So from Karen uh, my brother got a like a So your time is staying at the center with your brother. Yeah yeah at the center. Yes mm-hmm. it was quite hard because uh, some So toka center Karen at DC. Exactly yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I I, I I walked I remember from from town paka rongai got na hawk that time I thought kiri au kiri but they, but you see these hawkers yes. man mad respect to them bro mm. the one thing i came to realize when you talk about barabara you just meet some, like a mindy guy umechukua kidogo yani muda una unajipata tu ulifika umeona so that's exactly what happened so i can say that time you can't really think about the struggle because you are in the moment mm. you understand mm. and respect to especially what come out ni kwa sababu been there it's not easy Mm. but we give thanks bro so that's exactly don't come move to nairobi don't kanza mm-hmm. yeah then my brother moved away to he got a sponsorship at kasafiri then he went to london mm-hmm. so he told me to go back to mombasa so i was really thinking a lot about should i really go back to where i'm coming from or should i just do what i have to do you know mm-hmm. 
so that that's how upon really could you I, I got my first house in in Majengo yeah I, I remember my first rent was 500 shillings mm. now, how old are you because I was like, uh, 14, I, I think 15. I, I think of like 15 yeah so okay. at 15 you already got in your Bro, house me, me, I was, me, by by 13 14 I was paying rent 500 I remember and chef fungiwa go na jo nyumba mabati the way normally it is. Mm. So lili fungiwa go na London. Sasa so, ile dirisha lile inabidi unalikata na ingiza mkono na fungua na ingia na lala. Sasa jirani yangu akanisema, yeah. "Nikaja nikapata dirisha lile mbezibwa." Hey. So me fungiwa mlango. God, God. Sasa kuna dirisha. Eh. Sasa sasa kama jirani ana wivu sababu yeye analipa mimi silipi na anaingiaga. Alafu nyumba mchana ndugu yangu nyumba ni yako lakini ulali. Yeah. Joto. Joto. Baba. Mabati. Eh? <laughs> So at that time, so at 14, 15, your brother's gone abroad yeah, you know, to take so, care of yourself. Exactly. So I really thought about a lot because reality to be told, where we're really coming from, mm. it's all about like drugs, mambo ya jaba, kuchoma, nini. That wasn't really my thing because my questions all the times when I chill out with like the people I have, I ask them, at least in days na pita si zili nilo na atu tu. Bona pisi pia si tufanye, unasi amdo na kambia, oh, you know, if any mawazo like mba mtu anakwambia or maybe their, their families or their Probably their fathers or an akidom like no not really man even even the people that are is a family kuna mwenye alianzaga mwenye akuwa nayo yeah exactly so i really didn't like uh, that lifestyle because it was slow no one so we don't got that's not can and kakodisha nyumba na kumbuka my first my first contract i remember i got was in it was in kariako mm. for painting mm -hmm. Yeah, just painting the house. Actually, you know the houses, yes, bro. You see yes. Karako Police Station? Mm. Opposite. Mm. You see those creamy, creamy buildings? Yes, yes. Me until today, me and this, this guy. Yeah. I don't even want to mention his yeah. name. See, we did some contract, me, I'm telling you, we're supposed to be so paid. So, 15? Yeah, bro. Uh -huh. We're supposed to be paid 10 Gs. Me, I've never seen 10 Gs in my life. So, mm. me, every day I'm painting, I'm thinking of the 10 Gs. Yeah. I don't you give a point. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Bro, every day, you know, you work with these people, you have to sign, you have yeah. to write down the checks. So, you know, that is hope. True. Because you're like, I know I'm gonna get paid. Mm. Mongo's idea. Mm. Wax is done. Mm. See the moment of payment. You're being told to go to another office now. Uh, Until today. I deserve jelly mm. Me, I'm telling you, when I drive there, I just like to close my eyes and just. <laughs> yeah, but you see, we are grateful. I came to realize, you see, the ups and downs like that, they, they make you to, to be strong and everything. And we need that actually. Mm. Even personally, when I pray, I, just, I always pray to God uh, to give me the. To give me the hard times, to give me the good times. But for the hard times, Namomba, may he give me, may may I be strong? Because you can't be praying always for good times. times yes. I also need, I really need the bad times. I need the sad times. Mm -hmm. But I wanna be strong enough to be able to pass away. I'm a kui overcome. Exactly. Yes. Because something I'm getting out of you. So you're 15. At 15, whatever. For for me, where I was at that particular point, I feel like went to high school. Well, life. life was just all okay. Mungu but here, yeah. but here you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 I, did, I did struggle, I can't, I can't, I know, no. I can't lie. But, but you've tried, bro. But something very interesting is that, what did that moment teach you as a child? Like, how did you mature that early? Because 14, 15, you're still a child. Actually, you're, still, uh, you're not an adult, but no. you're here taking care of yourself in Nairobi. You're paying rent as, yes. as a child. Yes. You're looking for, uh, how, what, how did you mature so, up that early? So I can, I can say uh, the, the maturity, like that early, is because uh, maybe the moment when, so this is exactly, like the whole story, mm. like even Babango Kufa, mm. my dad, Ali Kufa come up by like like a, like a month or two, then you get a call being told your, your dad is dead. Mm. Oh, how so, old are you when your dad uh, It was on two or three. Mm. So two or three, and I'm, I'm, I'm 94. Mm. Yeah, so you can, you, mm. can, you understand. Mm. So imagine, um, my, my, my father was buried like three months then, mm. so I think from that moment, any man's a coma. I uh, feel like maybe kulelewa nje kuomba maskini kutumwa pengine you 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 get my point so i think uh, as i said the mentality it was it wasn't even about the edge it's because you've already done it we shall and exactly yeah. so the point was just to keep on moving every day in our life interesting yeah and just uh, when i met you you already moved from majengo you're going to bro jerico you bang your mabati ile bro that house was fire bro <laughs> you know <laughs> But let's take me through how, what's it called, like you started building out a business, what yes. was going through your mind? Because primarily the only thing that you had was your art, yes. or your talent, I mean. So uh, How did you now think about now building a business to even make you shift from a 500 house to maybe a 2000 house? How, how did that happen? So, so before even the business, mm. I moved from a 1500 house mm. 
to a to to a twenty five thousand mm. house. Mm -hmm. So people are like, man, this nigga is at a hammer at a road in human in But we never went back, bro. It's a little ill challenge going by about it to twenty five. What to, people were picturing is like we really want a first life, but it wasn't really about first life. For me, it was more about an office. For example, uh, their, their clients, when you, they're going to take a mat, they'll jump and everything. Mm -hmm. Their clients, when you're talking where can I park? Mm -hmm. So it's your decision. brand mm -hmm. So starting the business personally, like having been franchise and having people, my point of view wasn't even just about, there's so many people, they have like talent and everything, mm -hmm. but they don't have, I want a wezo. Mm. Or could you support So creating em employment, for example, I teach you how to do this and this and this and that. Mm. We can even work on like commission and everything. At the end of the day, oh, you so can... Also, started getting guys to work for you. E mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, for me, it's not really about working for me. We are working together mm -hmm. because uh, we are building a teamwork. Mm -hmm. For example, there's someone with Pass University, mm -hmm. Atakosa franchise, for example, like a KFC. Mm -hmm. Ata Pita Kilimani, Atakosa. Mm -hmm. So why can't you also have the same, same mentality on a business? Not mm -hmm. everyone in Kilimani will know about Ian. Not everyone. But mm -hmm. if they are different, whatever, They'll know, ah, please, oh, that, that's one of your place. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I've passed the one in, or the one in. So you see, it's creating employment. And apart from that, mm -hmm. I came to realize, uh, like, um, lately, a few of my guys, or even the, the ladies also, mm -hmm. like, uh, they, they just get deals. Then they ask you, what can we do about this? Then we sit down, we talk about it. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really nice. Because imagine you can be in the house. Mm -hmm. it, it means if you're not going to go out, mm -hmm. You're not earning anything. anything yes. But what if you're creating employment? Mm. I'm like, today I'll just sleep. But we can't come to the and pay Exactly. Yeah, bro. There's something very interesting before we just go on a break. What exactly I'm getting out of it. It's not the amount of papers that you have, but it's the business mind that you're able to have. So, Elie Ali started off, dropped out at Class 8, has made himself up to a point where he has different franchises in the uptown markets of Nairobi. It's quite an interesting story that you're going to continue after the break. So we're going to take a short commercial break. I'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the show. Before we went on the break, you were having a conversation with Elemin Ali, who's a class eight dropout. Very proud because he has managed to literally counter for that with his business uh, acumen and built up an empire in the arts industry and having different tattoo parlors all across Nairobi and also different parts of town. One of the interesting things about your journey is that even people never knew about this story. I'm sure very people knew that you just finished class eight because you've carried yourself quite well. Yeah, and sure. now you're serving the who's who. I know you're working with very different uh, what was it called organizations? Yes. I think the other day I saw that you're working with Safaricom and you yes. created what's it called the uh, portrait for Elid Kipchoge, who yes. you're there for the launch. Just take me through when you look back mm -hmm. and to where exactly you are right now. What did you think you did right, considering that you're in a world whereby education is considered the key to opening your doors? You, you opened your doors. What do you think you did right to get you to where you are right now? Yeah, uh, personally, um, uh, I can say what, what can you say more like uh, what I really did right is. Uh, always have a meeting with myself and, and accepting like where I've really failed and trying to fix it rather than telling myself I'm a that you know at some point you can have an, an argument but all the time we don't want to accept PSCC we did something which is not okay so I think the best thing is accepting that I failed and 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 what if what if I try this other thing you give a point just like business I've made maybe five thousand this month I've not made five, I've made two. Where is the problem coming from? You get my point? So the, I, I think that's the best thing and I'm grateful for. Every day you just try to learn and do something different and new, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know if it's Mepujibu. Yeah. Sure, I'm a Jibu. Yes, yes. And it's very interesting because I'm a boo, what's it called? I also, something I've also noticed about you is that you, you're very talkative and you're good at networking. Oh, you know? sure. <laughs> Yeah. What are some of the strategies that you actually use? Because you know, building a business, you literally have to sell. Yes. And what you're selling is literally art. It's sort of, uh, what's it called, cannot be quantified. That's true. But how have you managed? Just take me through, what's it called, maybe how you got your first big deal that enabled you move from Majengo to, what was your first big deal that uh, you got? Uh, my first big deal, like, I, I got it from uh, <clears throat> uh, Gertrude's Hospital, the one in Mudaig. Yes. Yeah, I remember, um, I did I did few portraits for a for client. As you said about the communication and everything, yes. um, first thing first, I, I believe uh, before you even go to your workplace and everything, there's an energy you need to create. Yeah. Because imagine, you have a good energy. Yeah, you, a good thing. It's <laughs> always, you have, yeah. always to have this because imagine you've never met that client mm -hmm. in the sun and they trust you enough to give you a down payment. They're not even sure that you're going to do it or not. Mm -hmm. But of course, the first thing first, they've given you trust. 
For example, let's even talk, even forget about painting, like a tattoo. Yeah. Someone is giving you trust to give them something permanent in their bodies. Yes. You understand? So it means whatever you're going to do, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I believe, come and say, if I'm working on a piece, it means that's my last one because yeah. I'm not guaranteed for the next one. True. Yeah, so I got a call uh, from a friend um, now in, in, in Getwoods in Mudaiga. Yes. The, um, at the radiologies and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was my first day. It was amazing. I remember. Did you have a company then? I'm all nah, he calls you as a person. Nah. <laughs> then come on, baby. So, so what happened is uh, he actually, I'm um, grateful. Um, he, he did everything for me, like he organized because there's no way they can pay if you're not registered. True. So he did all this without Kuniambia about commission and everything. Mm. So I, I was really grateful. So I remember for the first time, mm. I've never seen a check in my life, mm. you know. So I'm like, I'm like, ah. Mm. I remember I walked from Gertrude yes. straight. I, I didn't have even an account. To Buruburu, I opened my first account. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. I'm like, they dropped, you know, normally they drop the check on the box. Yes. I'm like, Ay, they're leaving it there. Uh -huh. So I'm like, so I didn't know the whole process. Yeah. Oh, so you just got to check, you didn't even, <laughs> you had an account then? I didn't have, I went straight to Buruburu to open an account the same day. Wow. Yeah, so every day... How much was it, if you may ask? It was 130, I won't lie. It was 130. So someone who was in class, I never had 100. I never had such amount. I remember when... So they told me it takes like three days. Three days, it was, you know, my chew. I said, I mean, I should go three days, Tim. When you do? I said, I remember I was in Jericho, man. I'm chilling. So I'm like, ah, oh, I'm baby. Bank, you want to go there? So I didn't know much about this kind of thing. And I'm grateful because after all the experience, I didn't rush kwa starea manini. Mm. You know, funny thing, the moment I get like a check like that, I just started in the achaga. Maapombe manini. Because I was in the condition new. I remember I went and bought uh, my first machine. And, and I bought uh, a few paints and everything. Because I didn't even know what I was going to do. I was going to fry. Yeah, so, so that was my first deal. And from there, it, they kept on coming mm. from people and the mm. services and everything. Mm. Yes. Interesting. So, one of the opportunities that you've actually had in terms of developing, I remember you mentioned to me, was that you also got an opportunity to go study tattooing in South Korea. Yes. How did the opportunity come about? And so you see, the yes. same same thing. You see, how many clients have you given me? I don't no, 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 no. How many people? I don't remember. Check this out. You don't yes. even have a tattoo, yes. right? I don't even have a tattoo. No, no, check this out. But check this yes. out. Uh -huh. how you see that, that energy? No, I know someone. Yo, bro. Beba, beba, You give me a point. How many times? Many times. Am I wrong or right? Yeah. You right. see that energy? So the same, same. I just got a call like, yo, bro. There's a friend of mine wanted that. An experience with Evie Navy. I'm like, yeah, I'm game. Same, same thing. I went, I, I, I made my passport and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the guy was called Han Jolin. Mm -hmm. A good person, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're there for almost like, almost like, mm -hmm. like three. I went, I went like a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, yes. Interesting. And also just through your journey, you've, uh, what's it called, served some of the biggest celebrities that you have in East Africa, from Diamonds yes, to Kanye yes. Grab to yeah. whoever. How did you come across them? And because one of the things about celebrities is that they always have a shield, like you can't access them. That's but true. here you are, someone who grew up, what's it called, a closet dropout, but you managed to build yourself to this particular level. Now you're serving the kings and the queens in this particular town. Yes. How did that come about? And uh, one thing I'll say, bro. I think, I think I'm, I think I'm lucky. I have, I have luck. I think in my life, because the reality, most of these celebrities, people text them, try like to mm. tell them I'm on. Yes. I'll be real, man. Like for example, shout out to my G, like Carly, yeah. bro. I got it was on a Sunday, man. I just got a text. You understand? A text, Yaje uh, Nikali. So me, I didn't, I didn't picture it's mm. Carly, Carly. Yeah. You understand? Then, then I got a call, yeah. like, bro, got no the message, yeah. Nikali. Yeah. Get the point. So I think it's because of the people that are, for example, you, then you telling him and then him checking it out. I remember, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know about uh, Travis Scott. Travis Scott. I didn't know about Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. Check this out. I'm the chilling. Travis Scott. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm the chilling. American, yeah. I even have like the picture and everything. Yes. Uh -huh. So I'm chilling. I'm like, hey, someone has like, like four more pictures. He has that blue thing. That time I'm like asking my guys, who is yeah. Travis Scott? Yeah. They're like, bro, you don't know Travis Scott? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't make a social media runner. No? You understand? So you can say it's it's like and also the energy that you create around mm. your people. What have you done for Scott? It's not even about doing. Yeah. Like him even checking out whatever Always that stuff. we're doing. Yes, so yeah. you see, you be grateful for that. Mm -hmm. You understand my True. point? So I can say it's a, 
as, as I said, the energy mm -hmm. you put within the people around. Of course, there is ups, there is downs, mm -hmm. but the most important thing is just to keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And what are some of the lessons that, maybe what are some of the lessons you've learned in terms of building up a business? Because here you are, uh, what's it called? You're building a business the first time you're doing it, you're the first time in your family trying to do this. But you're successful being the first one you said to own a sofa set in your house, in your from your family. You've been the first one to drive in your family. You're the first one to own your home from your family. How have you managed to to grow to this particular level? Uh, uh, I can say how how I've, I've managed to grow. Uh, it's also the persistence, like mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. the pushing and everything, and also by looking back. Mm -hmm. Like uh, where we're coming from. Yeah. Let's be realistic. Uh, most of us, we really wanna grow and maybe, maybe build like a house or whatever. But I came to realize, first of all, success comes between you and yourself. First of all, peace of mind. Yeah. You give me a point. Because you can have even even a hundred M and everything, yeah. and and you're not healthy. It yeah. doesn't help. So first thing first, you it's about you. I, I believe before you before you even buy that Mercedes or buy whatever that you want. First of all, you have to accept it, mm -hmm. that you already have it. Mm -hmm. Like even if you pray like, thank you God for my new mansion, even yeah. if you don't have it. Mm -hmm. So you see that energy, the moment you have it, mm -hmm. then you put action towards it, mm -hmm. according to my point of view. Interesting. Yes. And uh, what's it called? In terms of now growing up the businesses, because I remember you started off, uh, what's it called, from home, and then you went to build your first uh, store, maybe your first shop in town, and then you grew up to Westlands. Um, what has been the key? Because you know, sometimes, like, I don't know, I find that there's no template to entrepreneurship. For sure. But what was your, what's it called? How did you manage to do this? Because it's expensive renting in Nairobi, but here you are, you rented out, you started building and started building a brand. What are some of the elements you put into place to enable you to do this? Because it's not, uh, personally, from what I've experienced, it's not an easy journey. So you see, uh, before, before I even had my, my first office, yeah. I, I didn't start with, with paying rent. I, same thing, I just got a call like from some salon. Mm. I used to go and do like eyebrow tattoos mm. and everything. Oh, guys do eyebrow tattoos? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ladies like, or men? Uh, ladies, yes. Uh, but for men, uh, yeah. we do like lips also, you know. Uh, lips tattoos? Yeah, yeah, like if it's dark, we make it red and everything. You know? And that, okay, but it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so the movement of every day I used to go like, uh, mm. Yeah, so uh, mm. you in and out, in and out. Mm. So uh, I talked to the guy, I'm like, what if we can have like a space then we can do like commission and everything oh, so, you didn't out. so yeah so yeah. the first one yeah in mm. town it was a, it, it was an, a, a nice cube mm. you understand so mm. that's where we started then from there I, I, I used to pay commission then from there I was like you know what can i can i now rent you understand say le? growth mm. i think uh, most of us we, we 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 don't like improve every day in our life because we are scared mm -hmm. most of the people you understand and the moment you try it becomes easier and easier every day. Mm -hmm. The moment you risk, because you have to risk, you understand. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So just uh, so you st you mentioned to us that you started off in this particular small space. Yes. Uh, what was it called that you used to pay commission on? Yes. Moved to a cube. Yeah. Then take me through that journey to where exactly it is yeah. now, that you have so many franchises. Yes. So, now, mm -hmm, go so to the cube. Yeah. So now from the cube, mm -hmm. uh, for like uh, like three, four, five months, mm -hmm. then I rent it out. The same same area. Mm -hmm. So the services that you're providing through the cube are mostly tattoos and what pa exactly? Paintings, mm -hmm. tattoos. Actually, the reason of uh, me doing like tattoos, paintings, and everything. For example, uh, like in South Korea, I really learned one thing. As an artist, there's you don't have a limitation. You can you you are creating. Mm -hmm. You understand. So if you can paint it on a canvas, you can paint it on a paper, you can paint it on a skin. Mm -hmm. You understand. And if you can do all this, imagine having like a team of maybe ten or twenty people. Mm -hmm. So you, you, so it becomes good and better yes. every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from the <clears throat> from the rental, the same same area, I took like a slightly a bigger space. Mm -hmm. How much are you paying now? Uh, wait, that time, right? Yes. yes. I, I used to pay. I used to pay like twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. I remember twenty thousand. Yes. So from twenty in Kongo, you know, I want to come up and like I'm a living room, because mm -hmm. my ambition always as an office. I just want my client to just come straight and you just see what is happening. True. You know, you want to chill, maybe have a coffee, relax, mm -hmm. maybe not just a, a parlor or anything. Yes. Because most of the like studios, you can to paint is make. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, feel really, just like home, yeah. True. So I really, I've always wanted that, and I'm grateful I have it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's how it started. So from the cube, then I did the same same area, slightly like office kubo mm -hmm. Then I took like the whole, like the whole floor. Are you so, so the salon in Kwachini? So the business is growing so fast. Yes, 
Yes. Okay. I, I, okay, within like maybe like a year or two, mm-hmm. you understand. Mm-hmm. But nile tu ambishe nile. Because the more space, the better you. Those are time clients come, they have to wait outside. Mm-hmm. So my point was also for them to feel chilled. Even if I'm in the room, maybe tattooing or maybe painting or whatever, mm-hmm. at least they can chill. Maybe they have a, like a PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Or there's something going on yes. always. Yes. So from there in town, I've like I had this this thing like all the time, like I get a call. I'm not saying it in a, in, in in a bad way. Like uh, most of the clients are like, oh, don't me panamat, na ja ni 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 ni. So so and and, and and most of the clients when you're calling pijo and I can't do town. So that that point of I can't do town, I'm like, what if what if I try and 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 maybe a different location. I don't have to close this out. Yeah. So then I then I did the Kilimani one. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah, it's quite chill actually. Yes. So after doing that, now you get different clientele. Mm-hmm. Then from you know, I'm like, what if also some people are like. When you guys located, when you tell them maybe I'm in Kilimanjaro, you tell them like it's okay, I'll call you back. So that calling you back, of course, they, they can't tell you I can't come there. Mm. So I'm like, what if I have it in Westlands? Mm. Yeah, exactly. So this is in USA. You mm. exactly. So that's how it, it grew and everything. The big one is in Westlands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, yes, yes. Interesting. So you had uh, so that's very interesting. So you grew up from a small place. You're getting commissioned now for particular yes. franchises around it. Yes. So take, take me through. How now did you? Because to expand, you can't do everything. Can't that is everywhere. very true. Very true. So despite you being the brand, so how did you start getting people on board to assist you, or maybe how did you start hiring people, and what exactly was the? Uh, how did you go about hiring? Because I'm sure if someone calls you, they want to be done a tattoo, or maybe they want an art by Elamin, but Elamin is busy somewhere else. Yes. So how did you start getting? To hire people and how did you grow about? Uh, so uh, the the point of even uh, like hiring and everything. Of mm-hmm. course, you get messages like mm-hmm. yo, can I work with you? Things like this mm-hmm. and that. So even me teaching uh, like my artists mm-hmm. or my people, I believe in one thing: they're better than me at some point, and I'm also better. It's not even about being better. Mm-hmm. There are some things that they can do way different than me. The things they can do different. So the moment you accept such, see competition, sir. Mm-hmm. So then let me let me show you my ways. I'll also learn a few, few from you. So the moment that I, if I give a client to one of my guys, mm-hmm. I'm 100% I know we're going to deliver. Mm-hmm. You get the point. Mm-hmm. So point here is to confundish and to better than me. Amona, because I've been in the old mteja, I feel like I say, ah, I went to get a service of Allah, but I wasn't happy with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that's exactly the goal. So after teaching him, maybe I can confundish him again. And oh, everything. Then, then. Also, exactly. now you said I'm in a different uh, stores. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. So on the man, then you open a franchise. Like, yeah, you can be here. You can do this. Sometimes maybe we are, we have like events and everything. So I'm like, okay, we have to go. If any teamwork, it's amazing. Interesting. Yes. And the thing about life is that when you start from nothing and you've earned this success, because here you are, you, you earned your first hundred and thirty thousand from nothing. You're renting from five hundred bob to now. You're now making money because you can be able to afford rent in Nairobi. Yeah, we're grateful. People. Yes. What keeps you hungry? Because one of the things that I've noticed about you, like you're always hungry, you're always going for it. Bro. What keeps you hungry? Because <laughs> I'm like you've done it. Like you're sit down. You're, you're one of the most successful artists in this I'm, I'm, I'm in great, Kenya. I'm grateful. What bro. keeps you hungry? Poverty. Uh-huh. Oh, my skin. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro. Umeona. Hey, bro. Mtura ya twenty bobu na shindo kuno na bro na yangali na katro mase. Hey, you get my point. Uh-huh. So that is what makes I feel all of us mm-hmm. to be hungry, mm-hmm. and you rather you rather cry. Mm-hmm. But at least you're having like a nice cup of tea. You'd you rather cry in Java. Like, yes. Than yes. Cry, hey, bro, yeah. Imagine you have a Fuliza, you're crying about it. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, if, if, come out, if, if you're not making anything, mm-hmm. you give a point. So it means at the end of the day, we have to, bro. Because where we're coming from. And I believe even if you're coming from where Badoiko, mm-hmm. it's. No one wants to luck. Mm. That's all I can say, and that's the motivation. Hey, poverty, man. What, what's the lesson that poverty has taught you, and what's the other lesson that success has taught you? One thing uh, poverty has taught me in this life is uh, you can you can be a very smart person, but not many people will really will have time for you. Because you're poor. Because you don't have, bro. But you can be very stupid and you have cash and people, you can even make a joke, it makes sense, but they laugh. Ah, I've seen, I think you had forgotten that. You, the dictator, <laughs> I didn't watch the movie. Yes. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Yeah, because most of them are mm-hmm. For example, mm-hmm. there's a call, you don't want to be this, this kind of a person. Mm-hmm. You're going to visit your village. Mm-hmm. Or you want to be that person being told, 
kunywa sopu kaa tulia. Yeah. I don't know if you get my yes, point. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Mm. So yani lazima tujitume tu. Mm. Same things with call. There is a call you can you can make na utapunguza sauti. Na kuna scream about sema bana. Aragisha. Akupigia. Wewe sio una tajiri anadaiwa. Tajiri anadaiwa na bosi. Samani. Ndiko na kukumbusha. Tajiri anakumbushwa. Ndiko na kukumbusha ile 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 la yangu. Umeona? Maskini ana. Ah, wewe bwana. Alafu tajiri kuna muda kumpigia. Unadaiwa lakini eh sasa ni asubuhi bado bado amelala. Pesa ni yako lakini. You understand? Stop the pesa. Eh? Tajiri Sunday asubuhi 6 ulisema utanitumia. Lakini tajiri ah sasa hii lakini Sunday ni uko church. Acha nimpigie kesho. You understand? Weekday. Na pesa ni yako. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Kwanza tunasema kupiga the chest. Can I call you kindly? Umeona? <laughs> Let's hustle. <laughs> And then we just you've uh, I'm sure cuz for me you didn't know anything but you've learned things along the way. What's the one thing that you say has been what's it called? instrumental in terms of enabling you to what's it called? experience and maintain the success that you have. Yeah, so you see uh, you see the point as I said me uh not not every day. Mm. Not every day is going to be a good day. Mm. You get my point. Mm. And then also I feel like uh social media mm. at some point yani ile unajua kuna ile mtu ako na mentality mm. I have to like post every day. Mm. I thought no need peer pressure. Mm. So same in a bad way. As I said at some point you need to have a moment with yourself. Mm. You can even stay like right now sija post pengine kama siku nne. See it because there's mm. nothing to do but because also have a moment with yourself pia unajifikiria kwa sababu tangine ile kila time kila time pia watu wanachoka naye sio kwa naelewa point ya so i think need pia exactly just have time with yourself and the moment you're doing it you do it right no like you talk about peer pressure pengine jana nimepata pengine likes moja leo mbona nina mia sasa ile peer pressure hapana so mambo na ile funny thing you look at big brands and everything post na kutenda kutazana na maybe 2 or 3 4 5 people like mm-hmm. how, how much are they making so so much money you get the point yeah. exactly. i think your peer pressure to ndo mtu anapunguza kidogo mm-hmm. unajikubali mm-hmm. yes interesting all right so we're going to go into the quick fire and i have 10 questions that i'm going to ask you in 90 seconds yes so what's the greatest risk you've ever taken pay rent bro mm-hmm. yeah for your shop all right yeah, for what's all your these. favorite uh, month my favorite month yes. september bro which is your favorite word my favorite word mm-hmm. Bro, Mungu saidie. <laughs> What time do you usually go to bed at night? Ah, bro, it depends. Bro, mjengoni fully, you know that. Uh, depends. Yeah. Describe your style in one word. I'm a free spirit, bro. Mm. What are, what are you most afraid of as a child? Uh, as a child. Mm. Ah. Mimi nikorogo pa hindi. Style is a kunini but ni sawa. <laughs> What's your hidden talent? My hidden talent. Mm. I, th- I think I'm supposed to be like a jet fighter. Mm-hmm. I think. Money Speak on Italian to you like in. Money or happiness? Money or happiness. Mm-hmm. I bro happen. Oh yeah, hey, like lakini bado ina happiness. Pesa. <laughs> And finally, <laughs> um uh, what's your favorite color? My favorite, I love pink, bro. Mm-hmm. Man, I love pink. Interesting. Yes. And also pink the rock artist I'm a witch pink. No, just yeah, I no, just love pink. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, that's just been a fascinating conversation with Ali Amin Ali who's a tattoo artist and an artist in general. And from his story, I think one of the core things you've learned is that education is key but is not the only key thing that can enable you attain success and you've seen that through his journey from Mombasa as nobody to who is it, who is right now as a major uh, brand in this particular city. So thank you so much for having watched the show and finally as we just end up I only just want to remind you that we are at the Capital Club where it exactly happens for any entrepreneur all across Nairobi and all across the world because the Capital Club has access to so many different clubs all around the world in Dubai, New York, Nimit you can also have access. My name is Ian Dennis and this has been the Late Night Business.